Welcome to the series, Employee Health Services, Mind, Body, and Spirit. Employee Health is a section in the City of Albuquerque's Risk Management Division. Its mission is to promote a sense of community and increase wellness among city employees and their families by providing education and counseling about physical and mental health. And now, Mind, Body, and Spirit with Dr. Julia Bain. Hello and welcome to Mind, Body, Spirit. My name is Dr. Julia Bain and we have a very special guest with us today, the Division Manager of Public Service University, Mr. Tom Darling. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Julia. I really appreciate it. It's great to be here with well, you. Well, thank you for coming on and talking to us about this extremely important topic, sexual harassment. I know you've been doing a lot of training of, uh, of city employees, and it's been a hot topic in our society right now. And I, I really want to take this opportunity to educate the public what is sexual harassment, you know, are you a harasser, are you a victim, and just get the conversation, you know, going so that people feel like they can openly discuss this in a safe way. So just to get us start started, maybe you could tell us, what's your background? So I am a teacher. Um, I actually, a long time ago, used to be an architect and a project manager in the construction industry, but I got into teaching and worked at the community college running our business administration program for a number of years before coming to the city. Cool. And so now what I do for the city is I run our public service university, which is the a division in our human resources department that does all employee training, operational training, leadership training, development, and employee, employee development. So... I didn't know you used to be an architect. Mm -hmm. Back in the day. Back yeah. in the day. Yeah. Excellent. Sexual harassment is against the law. Could you please explain that? Yes. So, first off, I think it's important to define um, what sexual harassment is. And it's any unwelcome verbal, visual, physical conduct of a sexual nature that affects the working conditions or creates a hostile work environment. So. That's the formal definition of sexual Unwelcome. harassment. Unwelcome. Unwelcome, right. And, and I think that's the key, the key that a lot of people miss when they think about what sexual harassment is or isn't because the way that the law takes a look at it is, is if conversation between two or more in the workplace is considered welcome or not offensive, then by law it doesn't fall under that classification of being harassment. Even if it's nasty. Yes, sadly, that is the truth, the way that the law looks at it. Um, so, but where it gets a little tricky and a little dicey is just because maybe you and I are having a conversation together and you tell me a joke that's a little inappropriate. And I laugh and it's great and then we talk about it. But if somebody on that side of the room over here overhears the joke and that offends them uh -huh. or makes them feel uncomfortable, then what we've done is we've crossed that line because now that, uh, that behavior that they can hear uh -huh. is unwelcome to them. Our unprofessional behavior, which is okay by you and me, right. has adversely affected a witness and they say, uh-uh. That's correct. That's correct. Okay. So it's got to be unwelcome. Um, and the other thing, too, about sexual harassment is just because, just because someone makes a comment that, may be offensive or comes across as something that's inappropriate doesn't necessarily qualify for harassment when that person obviously it's unwelcome but that person has to make the person that's doing the action or harassing aware of the fact that that behavior is unwelcome they need they need to be informed so let's say you were to make a comment right mm -hmm. and that comment offends me or makes me feel uncomfortable, I have an obligation to let you know that that comment made me feel uncomfortable so that you have the ability to apologize, rectify, not do it again, uh -huh. or make the choice to continue doing it, which escalates it to the level of, of taking action. Let me use that personal example we sure. were talking about earlier. Um, when I first met you, I thought to myself, you have the best last name I've ever heard in my life. Darling. Mm -hmm. So we hadn't known each other very long, but we had an instant connection. Mm -hmm. I felt like I had known you my whole life. Um, and when I would see you in the hall, I would say, oh, hello, darling, mm -hmm. like that. And you, you 
would just smile and laugh. And then when I was getting ready for the show, I was thinking to myself, I wonder if Tom had, was a different person. And I said, oh, hello, darling. Mm -hmm. Not thinking for one second anything about that that was flirtatious or sexual mm -hmm. or, you know, in my mind, just being silly and friendly. Right. Maybe you might not have taken it that way. Right. So let's use me as an example. So, and that's exactly how it happens. So um, obviously, I've had to learn that my name is, is the best. Is, right, is, is the best last name in the whole and, world. And, and, I, and people have made fun of my name, especially when I was in middle school or in elementary school. You know, Clementine, oh my darling, Tommy darling. I mean, uh, over and over, uh -huh. I heard that in my, in my entire life. And so, as I grew up, I learned to you. You know, no one ever forgets my last name. Right. So I use that as, as a strength, and it's funny. But you're exactly right. Uh, it, what happens is, depending on who it is, um, sometimes it can come across as creepy. And I've actually had, you know, I've had some folks. So, so something that happens a lot of times in, in where sexual harassment sometimes begins is this idea of just being friendly and silly. You use the term silly. And a lot of times when we're trying to get to know people or trying to fit in, sometimes we're silly. Um, if we find somebody that's that's attractive and we want to you know we want to do business with them or we would like to work with them or get them to do something for us because we have something in the workplace, sometimes we flirt and and it's just as a natural part of our personality. And but there's a fine line there with with flirting, you know, being silly versus flirting, mm -hmm. um, and and what point does it make somebody uncomfortable and what and when does it not? Mm -hmm. So uh, if I felt uncomfortable with that, then you know, it would, part of it would be for me to say, oh, you know, yes, a lot of people make fun of my name and, you know, it really kind of drives me crazy. It's okay, you know, this kind of and thing. And of course, I would have been mortified right. that I had offended you in any way. And sometimes, sometimes what happens is the person who receives the behavior uh -huh. um, is afraid to say something about it because I don't want you to feel mortified. And I may assume, well, she was only kidding, I think. So <sighs> maybe I'm not going to say something to her. But if, but if it happens again, and then again and again, and then, it, then it's like in the emails, there's darling, oh, my darling, oh, oh. darling, right? And, and this is this. That's when it gets things. creepy. Right. And so we have to be able to let somebody know if it makes us uncomfortable. Uh. So people have, people have a huge tolerance level. Uh, and, and there's different situations that in the workplace where the culture of the workplace kind of drives behavior. For instance, here at the city, uh, we have certain departments here at the city that, that have a different type of culture, a high stress culture, whether, whether it be in one of our, you know, our, in, in our public safety areas where they deal with a lot of really rough, uh, rough situations and, and, and dealing with crime or, or really high stress, or we have so, some, some departments we have are more um, blue collar. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes what happens is there's a lot of banter that goes on in those departments. It becomes and, very informal. Yes, and it becomes part of the corporate culture. Uh -huh. So, uh, you know, even, you know, even, you know, I'm, I'm just going to pick on military and police just as a general example. Okay. It's not uncommon for them to, to joke and tease each other because of the high levels of stress. And I've actually been told in some of the classes that we've done for, for folks in these areas that, oh my gosh, Tom, really? Really? I can't joke anymore? I can't? It's like, these are our brothers and sisters. We work together. Uh -huh. And actually some of the women in these professions have actually said, you know, they've joked about having some of the worst language of anybody in, on those teams. Okay. And, and so in talking through that, you know, they explained to me you know, Tom, well, part of this is our corporate culture. This, this is how we cope with, you know, all the, you know, the, the crime or, all, you, know, the, the, you know, all the defense we do and, and things we do. And this is how we cope and this is how we bond, whether we're male or, male or female. And I always, I always come back to this. While that behavior may be welcomed behavior and not qualify as sexual harassment, we always have to ask ourselves a question, what is common sense, right? So is it common sense to joke about, another person's body? Or is it common sense to flirt and joke about having sex with each other or doing things? Or I mean, there's a, we can go really far in this discussion about right. the things that people right. joke about. Right. Because inevitably what happens is 
this type of behavior amongst friends is totally welcome right up to the place that it's unwelcome because everybody at some point crosses a line. And then at that point, when, when someone crosses the line and suddenly, you know, two people in the workplace who tease each other, maybe they actually physically touch each other, they do things, they, uh, you know, play these course playing games. Um, the word locker room talk uh -huh. is what's got thrown a lot around in the media. Uh -huh. And, and we, we get locker room talk from football players and baseball players and basketball players and the way they talk in the locker room. The problem with even in the locker room, though, is is if somebody snapped me with a towel in a locker room, I would be offended, and that's unwelcome behavior, right? Okay. So we, ha we have to remember that when, when it becomes unwelcome, we have, to, we have to ask ourselves, and this is what people do, they say, well, it was okay last week. Well, why are you offended by this when you weren't offended by this? Uh -huh. And that's where the, the idea of the common sense approach comes because inappropriate behavior is inappropriate. And it's always inappropriate. Is it ever appropriate to talk about another person's body or sex life or to walk up behind, you know, a, a member of the opposite sex in the workplace and give them a back rub while you're talking about, you know, the assignment they're working on? Uh -huh. Is it appropriate to kiss somebody on the forehead? Is it appropriate to give somebody a full frontal hug that lasts for 10 seconds if you're not dating them or not married to them? Is it appropriate to even date? co-workers in the workplace. Now, does that mean that we should stop altogether? We don't make eye contact, we, we communicate, we, we don't say anything, we don't, no, it doesn't mean that at all. It just means we need to, we need to take a common sense approach. Well, especially as a, a city employee, you know, we are, we're public servants, we're, um, you know, this is supposed to be a formal environment. Right, right. You know, we can get disciplined for conduct unbecoming, yes. not to mention sexual harassment. Right, right. We are public officials here. Right. We're, no matter what our job description, we are public officials. And so you would think here correct. people would be even more hyper vigilant versus, like, I don't know, some, you know, retail store down the mm -hmm. street. But that's not true. Well, it, it varies. I mean, we're a very large organization, 16, and yeah. yeah, we have we have over six thousand employees here, yeah. and we have lots of different divisions. And by the way, just because someone is in a more frontline blue collar working situation versus a white collar sitting behind the desk or even a management position, doesn't mean that sexual harassment exists more in one area than it does in another. Right. It exi It exists everywhere, and and it's and it's subtle. So it's. Here's why. Something, something that you and I talked about before related to this concept of common sense is it's like, well, what is common sense, <laughs> right? We, we, we take a common sense approach to, to harassment, and we assume that everybody knows that these five, you know, whether it's verbal, physical, nonverbal, visual, or even gender discrimination, we know that that's all wrong, that's all wrong and inappropriate. But do we really know that? And, and here's what I like to share. When we talk in the class, when we talk about common sense, we talk about this fact that <laughs> when we leave our nice professional work environment that we're in all day, where we're really we're showing respect, we're behaving appropriately, we go home, we have dinner, we turn on the television. There's not a single show on television other than maybe something on the Animal Channel, right, or Animal Planet. Because um, even on HGTV, I saw this happen. Um, <laughs> But every single show on TV has some type of component in it where harassment and horseplay and, and sexual innuendo and all these things are commonplace. So interesting story. My, my youngest son just graduated from high school. And so he's had some time off during the day because he works at night. So I walked in his room the other day, you know, other day to see what he was doing. And he was watching TV and he was streaming a show. He was streaming The Office which The Office is a funny show. <laughs> and I said, oh, how long have you been watching this? He says, well, I've got like three more episodes and then I will be through the entire show. He, he binge watched The Office. He really S liked it. So, yeah, 17 years old. So, you know, I, at first I laughed about it. I thought, oh, you know, it's great. And then I thought, wait a minute. <laughs> if you all have ever seen The Office, 
this show, this show is everything you don't do <laughs> in the office. <laughs> everything related to what harassment is. Uh, every episode is nothing full of nothing but harassment. <laughs> And, and so, you know, common sense, what common sense is now is that what we watch on TV and what we consume and what we understand in the media, that's what we're teaching people is common sense. And so when they come to work and, they, and they're in the work environment and they see a situation that mimics something they've seen online or, or there's, you know, there's a young man over here and there's a gal over here that's got a very short skirt on and she's walking around and all that this person is known is to look that's become the common sense and so that's why it's important for us to be able to help people understand it no it's not appropriate to look at your office workers legs well she shouldn't have worn that skirt to work we talk about that in our training oh my goodness and it's like it has nothing to do with that it's time for crucial conversations yes, because of what people are just inundated with yes. in terms of um like you said, what's on television, what's on television, what's on the radio, lyrics to certain songs, right. um, where people are crossing the line all the time. Right. And, and this isn't saying that this is not a censorship discussion. It's, it's not that at all. It's making sure we understand the difference between make-believe um, and what's appropriate and what's not. And, and being able to make those determinations. Make-believe. Yes. Yeah. Make those determinations for for how our behavior is going to reflect what is professional and what is appropriate. Mm -hmm. uh, it, is, it is common sense to treat somebody with dignity and respect. Yes. Um, Fan it, fantasy versus reality. That's right. So one example that we, you know, we talk about in our class, because uh, Danielle, one of my, my female trainers and I, we will do some role plays sometimes to explain how something might look. Oh, good. And so one of the things I'll, I'll ask the class is I'll look down at Danielle's shoes and I'll, and I'll say, wow, Danielle, those are, those are really amazing shoes. And then I'll, and then I'll, and then she'll say, thank you. And, and then I'll ask the class, I said, was there anything inappropriate about me commenting on Danielle's shoes? And of course the class's response, you know, is no, but then they're like, well, I don't know, should, you know, should we? And so I asked Danielle, I said, when I, when I commented on your shoes, how'd that make you feel? And then, she, of course, she laughed. She says, well, I collect shoes, and so it means a lot to me. It's actually, it's actually a really good thing. Okay? So common sense would say, those are, really, those are nice shoes. Now, if I looked at her shoes and say, God, those shoes make you look hot. That's not common sense. And I've crossed the line. I'm not commenting on her shoes anymore. Now I'm talking about her in a sexual way. Right. And I'm talking about her, her, her body. I'm talking about her personally. I'm being provocative. I'm, I'm actually communicating a whole bunch of other things that I didn't mean and to And the thing of it is, people take their sexuality with them wherever they, wherever go. they go. We don't leave it at home when we come to work. We're still a sexual human being. That's correct. So what's your comment on that statement? On being a sexual human being everywhere we go. Yeah. So you know, we, we live in a country where the freedom of expression is valued and it's important. Um, and so for us to suggest that you cannot be who you are, right, right that, that's common sense. Like, no, you're going to be who you are. Uh, but, for instance, here at the city of Albuquerque, uh, we have a dress code. And so, yeah, we do. you know, you can't, you can't wear shorty shorts or spanks to work. <laughs> now, now it's funny. Some of you may laugh and say, well, duh. <laughs> well, we actually have lifeguards that work at our swimming pools that dress in bathing suits. And I've seen, and we have employees that have worn spanks to work, but that's part of their dress code, right? Uh -huh. um, we have to think about how, you know, how, what it is we're wearing. Uh, you know, we don't want to wear blouses that reveal. Um, not not that not that people should or shouldn't be looking, but there's a reason why we're why we're trying to project professionally. Mm -hmm. um, why you know why don't they let you wear jeans? You know that people always it's always said, <laughs> well, can't, why can't we have a jeans day? And 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 here's the bottom line, because um, <laughs> there's five or six different types of jeans, and inevitably somebody wears jeans that don't fit. Are way too tight. Yeah. <laughs> so so. So we want to help eliminate, we want you to be yourself, but we also want to eliminate unnecessary distractions. And we have a commitment to every employee here that, that they are guaranteed a safe workplace free of harassment. Okay? Excellent. And so that's the commitment that we have to our employees. But not every company does. No, they don't. 
We do. And what if somebody watching this program works for a company that does not have those kind of protections for them? So one of the thing is one of the things I want to say, and because we because even though we have those protections, we have to say this to our own employees, is when you're in a situation and somebody may make a comment, and that comment makes you feel uncomfortable, or that comment feels like it has crossed the line or is inappropriate. Mm -hmm. Number one, y you need to be able to let that person know that they've made you uncomfortable. Now, every time I say that, then we get the response, well, what if they're my boss, right? Well, it's important to still communicate that. Uh -huh. um, if you have a good supervisor, um, if you like your job, if the place you work is a great place to work. I mean, my hopes are is that you'd be working in a place that you want to work, okay? Mm -hmm. Although sometimes we just have to work where we have to work. And they need to know because the, con the behavior will continue if they're not made aware. It's called enabling. If you don't say stop that, right. you're, say you're basically communicating it's, it's okay, okay. That's for right. you to treat me that way because I have not said stop that. It makes me right. feel uncomfortable. I told you a story before we went on air um, about some sexual harassment I've endured over the years. And I'm a pretty assertive person. Not everybody is, has that skill, mm -hmm. and my heart goes out to them. And, um, you know, maybe we'll do a show on talking about assertiveness and how mm -hmm. to become assertive. But um, I, I met a colleague, and he, we were talking in the hall. He'd been at work m maybe a week. And the entire conversation, he was staring at my chest. Mm. Now, here I'm wearing a very formal suit up to here. You know, I'm very formally dressed. and. It made me feel extremely uncomfortable. And so what I did is I put my head down to where his eyes were and followed him back up and looked at him and said, when you talk to me, mm -hmm. you speak to my face, not to my chest. Right, right. I don't like that. He never did it again. Mm -hmm. but did he apologize? No. He just didn't do it again. He did not apologize. He looked stunned that I had confronted him. And, but not everybody has the, a position of right. authority like I do here right. at the city. Right. Some people are at the bottom part of the low, lower part of the totem pole in terms of the organizational chart, and they don't feel like they have the power or the right to say stop. And, uh, you know, what do you say to those people? So in that situation, um, first off, anytime, you, anytime one of these situations occurs, you definitely want to document it. Okay. Okay, keep a record of it. Okay. But then go find another supervisor or somebody that you can talk to, preferably if you have an HR, HR representative mm -hmm. or HR department, uh -huh. is to go and, and talk to somebody. Report and then, it. Right, and then communicate. And everybody has a different reporting process. Okay. So uh, you definitely want to communicate. If, if you feel uncomfortable letting that person know, you definitely want to communicate that you feel uncomfortable, and this is why. It's my supervisor, or I, you know, I, I'm in a very precarious position here. But you need to inform somebody. Yeah. So this is what's interesting when you when you inform somebody else. And so you don't feel alone. That's right. And 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 I cannot stress enough: do not wait. If this happens, you need to talk to somebody the day it happens. Yes. Don't wait because you'll talk yourself out of it. And then what happens later on down the line if you need to defend yourself or you end up going to court or you, you end up fighting for your job, if you've let this go and haven't addressed it and talked about it, there are there's no documents, there's no record, there's no, uh -huh. you know, history that shows that this was an issue. And right. a court a court needs to have that. So right. the other thing too is it's imp and this is really important for all for all you supervisors out there that are that are listening. If someone comes to you and shares with you that they're feeling harassed or they're in a situation, you have an obligation to do something about it, to document, to follow up, to follow up with that person. Um, actually, there was a story that I, I have of an employee who had a, an employee underneath them who was verbally abusive, um, told, you know, told some, some very inappropriate jokes. and and was kind of rude. And so she went to her supervisor and she said, you know, this employee uh, is behaving this way and it's, uh, it, it makes me uncomfortable and everybody else uncomfortable and I need you to do something about it. And her supervisor looked at, looked at her and said, you know, he's just that way. You just, need, you just need to toughen up. 
and, and you know, just toughen up and, and stand up to him and it'll be better. And, and I looked at that employee and I told her, I said, you need to go tell somebody right now because a supervisor that is unwilling to take this seriously and do something with it becomes complicit and can also end up getting fired from their job. Good. Can also end up being implicated in the lawsuit Good. and becomes part of the problem. Good. So, so everybody, you have an obligation. You have an obligation. You have an obligation uh, to be brave and step up yeah. and help this person. Yes. So what if you what if you're fired because you report you've been sexually harassed? Do you have any rights in terms of the law? You do. Um, so if if obviously if you've been terminated, you know without cause. Or, I, my first thing I would do is. Le seeking legal counsel is is actually a great thing to do. A lot of people have a hard time saying, well, I can't afford a lawyer. I don't know who to talk to. Um, you, you should do that. That's what they're there for. And usually in these cases, they don't charge and, you know, they make their payment part of that case. And they will, they'll meet with you and talk about whether or not there's a case. Um, the other thing, too, is the Equal, Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, the EEOC, mm -hmm. is very, very helpful in, in, in situations like this. Now, okay. a lot of companies will say, Oh, don't go to EOC, EOC before you come to us. Let us handle it internally. And yes, that's what a human resources department is for, is to handle these things internally so that they can discipline and handle this mm -hmm. um, because that is a responsibility of the organization. Take action. Yes, but yeah. in the event that the organization is not taking action or the organization is not dealing with this, mm -hmm. um, I, you definitely want to approach that. I know in the Mexico Workforce Solutions in New Mexico has a lot of different resources related to harassment um, as well. So yes, there are things that you can do. Uh, understand it's going to take time. Um, that's, the, that's the difficult part of this. Some people give up because they, they, it's just too much hassle sometimes. Uh -huh. But understand this is exactly what happened in Hollywood, right? I mean, how many years went by before somebody finally said something and then suddenly everybody felt like they had the courage. When, had, a, had a voice. Right. Um, somebody may have lost their job, but we, we, we tell this to our employees. Um, it's better to lose your job protecting yourself from, from a hostile environment uh -huh. and then to fight it than it is to stay there and allow yourself to be a victim and continue to be harassed. Yeah, because it will wound you and weaken you yes. and harm you, and it's not worth it. It's and, not worth it. And while some folks will say, well, you don't understand how hard it is to get another job, I do. And But there's other jobs, and there's places where you can be safe. Can you believe we only have three minutes left? Oh, my gosh, no. I know. So we need to wrap up with your final words of wisdom about sexual harassment in the workplace. What do you want the audience to re know and remember? Don't forget. So uh, that's a really good question because it's, it's a big topic. The first thing is remember that people don't have common sense around this anymore. Uh, pe many people, especially the younger generation, don't understand uh -huh. that staring at somebody's body or making inappropriate jokes or comments is inappropriate unless they've been taught that. And so when you, when you hire folks, uh, if you're a supervisor, if you're a company, if you hire somebody, train them. Help them understand they need training. Mm -hmm. um, if you're an employee, if you've never been trained, I highly recommend there's lots of different online, I mean, lots of resources to watch about what is harassment. Um, I'm not suggesting that you don't joke or you don't make friends and have conversations. Uh, it's always important to know what's, want, what's welcome and what's unwelcome. Uh -huh. if, if, I'll give you an example. If, if I was going to tell you a joke, and I thought maybe it might be a little inappropriate, but we've been friends for two or three years. I could say, do you mind if I tell you a joke? It might be a little inappropriate, but it relates to what we're talking about. Uh -huh. That gives you the opportunity to tell me no or uh -huh. yes. And then if it's offensive, at least I prepared you. And then you then have the opportunity to tell me, you know what, Tom? You were right. That was a little inappropriate and offensive. I see your point, but I prefer... Yeah, you know, yeah. I prefer not to... Appear. Keep the jokes to yourself. Yes. And then, so that helps us to be proactive. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing, when, when somebody says something to you that is harassing, please make sure that you let them know that it's made you uncomfortable. If it's your friend, if it's somebody, a stranger you've met, if somebody at work, it's a good habit to get into. If it's your children, let them know. 
uh, that's inappropriate. You know, I, I'm not comfortable with that. Uh-huh. We need to we need to we need to practice being able to be clear. So, so that people understand what we what we accept and what we don't so. have the courage mm-hmm. to be honest. That's right, That's and right. it does it does take courage to be it does. honest. But you can do it, Tom. You're amazing. Oh, thank you so much. It and was great to be here. You were it, it was su- such a great show. I knew it would be. And will you come back and we could talk yes. about something else? Yes, would love that. Yes. Perfect. Awesome. And thank you for watching. This is Dr. Julia Bain. Until next time, be happy and be well. This has been Employee Health Services Mind, Body, and Spirit. For more information, call the City of Albuquerque's Employee Health Services at 768-4613. Let the Employee Health Services staff let you be your best at work, at home, and at play.